Man, I'm in the air about what to call this this episode right here. And uh, that's usually a good thing. That means I got shit to talk about. I don't know whether to call it uh, reject modernity. You know, that meme that's going around right now. Reject modernity. Uh, return to tradition or embrace tradition or whatever the fuck. Re- reject modernity. Return to monkey. How about you embrace post-modernity? How about that? I mean, if right now we're calling it modernity and right now the socio-cultural political landscape is utter shit, why would you not embrace what comes after? Look beyond. Look beyond. Because if you think the world is going to hell in a handbasket, embrace the beyond it doesn't have to be hell it doesn't have to be hell work work for what comes after i mean you're going to have to work obviously right i think the step the key step that is missing from that analysis is work you have to work for what comes after if you don't work and you just sit bitch and whine you're going to be like oh the world is going to hell in a handbasket you become one of these uh, self-fulfilling prophets, a prepper. You're just stacking guns and ammo and food and, and waiting for the world to crumble. That shit's going to crumble. Why the fuck? Why the fuck would it uh, remain intact for you? Why, why the fu- What good would you be if it remained intact? Your fucking gu- your guns, bullets, food, all that shit would go to waste if it didn't turn to shit. That's the self-fulfilling prophecy. So if you want to break ground, literally be the first, be the first to stick the shovel into the the ground, move the first shovel full of dirt, and work towards the future so that it doesn't continue. It doesn't turn out to... uh, a a progression of the shit that's happening now, right? That's that's what you want to work against. That's what you don't want to have happen. If you don't want the world to go to hell in a hand basket, then you, you better fucking move that basket, yo. Otherwise, what can we expect? Just another fucking LARPer. A LARPer getting ready for the world's end that they might not even live to see. They might not even live through the first 30 minutes of it. Embrace post-modernity. But you gotta make it look good. You have to make it look good on, on some corporate cowboy shit. I get it. It's full of risk. And you're fraught with fear you're full of fear right but you can't fear evil dog you cannot fear any evil regardless of what ideals you hold close religious or spiritual or otherwise you can't fear evil if you do you're just gonna get ran through you will live to see your worst fears come through And you'll have to uh, live them. You'll have to experience them. And even if even if you prepare, even if you prepare, you're going to live to see your worst fears come true. You can't fear that shit. You can't fear that shit. Yeah, it's nice to prep. It's nice to feel prepared, but you can't prepare for the the most evil. It is not possible. It's not possible. Courage, courage isn't isn't a, a a prepared laboratory solution. They haven't come up with it yet. They have not come up with it yet. You might think, oh, what about cocaine and, and methamphetamine? That shit doesn't make people fearless. It makes people reckless. I'll give you that. But it doesn't make people fearless. You ever seen a dope fiend? There's some out there that that look fearless, that act courageous, but that's because, you know, they're high. 
And then there's some on the other end of the spectrum. Scared bitches will steal your shit for a $20 rock. Will suck dick for five. <laughs> if if the other if if courage was the case, then fuck it, man. I I, I think uh I think that it'd be a subsidized program. They wouldn't just be handing out pookie pipes for free as a social service. They might make it standard issue for militaries and shit. But that obviously isn't the case. It's not the case. If anything, the, the fact that they're subsidizing pookie pipes ought to tell you just what effect they're betting the program is going to have on the population. They're just going to amp amp up the fear. They're just going to amp up the fear. And sure, it ain't even like that evil, right? If we're getting real with it, it's just an inanimate object. You can smoke up and it does funny shit to your brain. And then that funny shit causes you to do funny shit in real life. And then that funny shit in real life could could, uh, land you in a number of places, right? I mean, those are just logical outcomes of an action. Necessarily consequences to action. Consequences of an affirmative decision to smoke up or, you know, any other number of dopamine releasing activities it's a consequence from an affirmative decision you choose to be productive you choose to be creative you choose to break ground when the shit around you looks and appears to be crumbling down that's what makes you valuable. That's what makes you different. People want, professionals want someone like that on their team who isn't going to be held up because a situation looks bleak. They have to keep pushing forward. They must know how to push forward. <laughs> and more often than not, it's just it's just having fun with the shit. It's having fun with the shit. Even if it's difficult to do, even if it's physically, mentally taxing, you just gotta have fun with it. You gotta make it look good. If you want the future to look aesthetic, then you have to be aesthetic now. If you think the future is going to hell in a handbasket, the shit is already in hell now. What are you going to do to move it? What are you going to do to change it? Shit's already in hell now. If you, if you, <laughs> I can't fuck with the press people around me. Like it's, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. Every now and then, to, uh, to uh, contemplate cynicism. But if you can't move out of depression, if you're doing the same activities and uh, not making any adjustment just to bitch and whine and moan and say, you know, oh, the, f- the, world's, the world's different, the world's changed and, and, and I can't find my purpose in life. Man, just, just sell yourself. Fucking hoe yourself out for money, I guess. <laughs> hoe yourself out for money. At least you'll be producing, uh, what's it called? Inherent. At least you'll be manifesting your inherent value, which you deem yourself worth to be. But if you can hold it together, if you can hold it together with discipline, right? Because I can motivate you. I can inspire you with these little podcasts, right? But if you don't have the discipline to keep that shit together long enough to do something worthwhile what you think 
plots and plans come together overnight. No, that's some dope fiend mentality shit, yo. <laughs> that's that's dope fiend mentality. Plans for greatness, plans for success, plans for termination. Those aren't just created overnight. You gotta lay those out. You have to take inventory of all the key players, of all the decisions and their likely consequences, their outcomes. It's mathematics, it's science, it's art, it's business. And that shit's personal, man. Business is always personal. You know what it is, man. Business is war. I like these. Uh, I like these little episodes. These episodes are uh, more cathartic, more often than not. More cathartic than uh, I usually speak in day-to-day life, but I, I think it's nice to be able to release, to vent. Now, I, now I said this before. I'm, I'm, I treat these episodes. I treat the podcast. If I don't have guests, speakers, if I don't have information to relay, if I'm not providing some kind of professional opinion, it's just a sounding board. It's just a sounding board for me to be able to walk through an idea, really contemplate it, string it out, really flesh it out, pull it apart, dissect it, organize it and reorganize it. And in my professional life, be able to uh, utilize it in a in a demonstrably effective manner. How you speak is how you deal. How you carry yourself is how you are. You know that sort of thing. This in, in every other in any other sense, I guess this is just practice. This is practice for real life. Stepping away from real life and jumping on this podcast, it's its practice. It's not real life. It's like going to school, but going to school in your mind, educating your inner self, right? If you want to get all fucking holistic about it, <laughs> just educating your, uh, what is it? Edifying, Ed- edifying those other neurological pathways for speech for thought, for uh, for development, you know, social development. If I want to be a more effective communicator, I've got to communicate. There's no other way. I've got to practice. And while it's true, practice makes permanent. There's just levels to this shit. What I do on the podcast is practice creative thinking. I said... This was a sounding board. I'm breaking new ground here. Or I'm just breaking ground. I'm always breaking new ground, right? But there's subtleties that you can use in professional life that you probably can't bring over from your personal life. And, and I mean, this, this podcast is very personal in that sense. Where in private, just here on the podcast you know, in parentheses, quote unquote, on the podcast, I can practice forms of expression that I may or may not necessarily bring into my professional life. If I find them effective, if I think they sound right, if they feel aesthetic, notice, notice how I'm tying that shit back into the beginning of the episode. If they feel aesthetic to me, I'll work on them. It's like it's like working on a bit. It's like being an actor. It's like being a, a a comedian of the theater of life. And I'm working on material always. I'm always working on material. But on the podcast, I can hone the craft where I can't in my day to day life. In my day to day life. Yeah, I'm always engaging in some form of social research, right? I'm pulling strings here and there. 
uh, sometimes for effect, sometimes with intent, in order to achieve an outcome and or record what the outcome was. So, you know, for future reference, I know what to do or not to do when it comes to uh, professional relationships. But on the podcast, I'm feeling out how the how even the words feel coming out of my mouth, right? Whether or not they roll a certain way, have a a particular lilt and the tonality, how I pronounce them. Why? Because I know a lot of this counts. Sure, you can't see my facial expressions. That's something else I work on. Apart. Apart from all this. It could be a couple, what? Like a split second in front of the mirror, even? In a reflection of any kind? Because if you want to be aesthetic, you have to practice aestheticism. Aestheticism? Did I just make that up? I don't know. Probably not. Aesthetics have been around for a long time. And if folks, and if you want to be aesthetic, you just have to practice being aesthetic. That's all. <laughs> Breaking ground. Yeah, I'll probably put that as a title. Breaking ground. That makes sense. <sighs> You just got to be better, man. You got to be better. You have to think about what the future has in store. And if you think the shit's looking bad or going bad, why would you continue doing the same shit you're doing now? Yes, I get it. It takes a little risk. But it's a risk everybody could share. It's a risk everybody could shoulder. Like, why wouldn't you do it, you know? It is what it is, ultimately. It's a personal choice. Some folks enjoy the feeling of, uh, of just wallowing in, in fear because they feel like they have a purpose, a sense of purpose, a sense of struggle, and they feel righteous. They feel self-righteous about it. It doesn't have to be like that. You could be better. You could be working on something better. And not fearing about something you can't control now. Funny, right? They say you can't control the future. <laughs> Laughing's just half the battle. You still got fucking work to do. <laughs> 